we don't, I, did, I had no idea what he was going to talk about. My, my opening remarks were regarding risk as well, because I was thinking about the primary opportunity. I was thinking about how, you know, if there's anything that you could wish to be better at and increase your skills in, it is being a better recruiter. Being a better recruiter is going to solve all your problems. Being a better recruiter is going to help you make more money. You'll always have places to go. You're going to get the recognition. You're going to win the trips. You're going to be in front of the room, right? Your business is going to have the most value. Eventually, you'll have passive income. So how do you become a better recruiter? Becoming a better recruiter, number one, is understanding and having the belief that this is an amazing opportunity for everybody. And people are going to use the opportunity in different ways, right? Some people are just gonna do investments. Some people are just gonna do insurance. Some people are just gonna come here to learn. Some people are gonna build a legitimate business here. But the point is, is you have to believe that everybody should try. And if you believe that, then you'll be a great recruiter because at the end of the day, why wouldn't everybody try this? Yeah. See, in business, there is something called asymmetric risk. So when I read this, these business books, this is what it talks about. An asymmetric risk is when there's an imbalance between the risk and the reward. There's a very big difference between the risk and reward, right? Or the downside and the upside. So when you're in a situation where the reward is so much greater than the potential loss, this is called an asymmetric risk. And when the, when the potential for gain is so much greater than the potential for loss, then there becomes a risk in not taking that shot. Does that make sense? And you know, when, when there's such a big potential for gain and a, and a small risk of loss, and you don't take the shot, you don't take the chance, then years later, how do you feel? That's when there's an emotional aspect to not taking a chance. Because people think, man, maybe that's something I should have tried. Maybe that's something I could have done. Or in the, they're in a worse financial situation, they say, maybe that's something that I should have paid attention to, or I, I should have put some time in. There's an emotional aspect to not taking the chance. But if you take the chance, even if you don't win, there's an, there's an emotional benefit. Even if you don't win, because you say, man, at least I tried. I gave that thing a couple years. I met a lot of cool people. I won uh, you know, some awards. I got educated about money. At least I can say that I put some effort into it. So asymmetric risk. So why is it that a lot of times we attract a lot of young people? Because young people understand this, right? They say, I don't have anything to lose right now. I ain't got no money, right? I don't, I, I don't want to work for someone else. I don't have a family. Let me go and try something new. So the asymmetric risk for young people, the, the risk-reward proposition, it always makes sense for them to try. Now, when you get a little bit older, people start to see the risk-reward very differently because maybe they don't have a lot of time, but then again, you know, having a lot of time and simultaneously not having a lot of money, that's a tough situation. You need to pull yourself out of that. I believe that the Primerica opportunity can help people do that. I mean, let's talk about, and this is what you have to talk through with people, what is the downside risk in someone trying the business? Like Micho, you have, you have how many kids do you have? Four. You have, he has four kids, right? If Primerica didn't work out or you don't make any money in any given month, you still have a job, right? The downside isn't that big of a deal. Right. But what is the upside? What is the upside you get a couple recruits? What's the upside if you get five, six sales a month? What's the upside if you get your securities license? That amount of money is life changing to people. Right? Me and you are working on some cases and really you're doing an amazing job, but if you can get a case, you know, securities and then insurance, like let's call it a client, and they do insurance and investments, and you're making three grand and four grand and three grand and two grand. I mean, how much of an increase is that from your already great paycheck that you're getting from the military? You're getting 30, 40, 50% increases in income those months. The potential for upside is unbelievable. But at the end of the day, if 
you took money out of the equation, is there still a benefit in you being here and being in the meetings and learning and getting licensed and managing your own money and changing your attitude? That's the way you gotta think of it. But if I'm recruiting someone, I'm thinking, man, I don't want this person to go through adversity. Maybe it's not for them. They have kids. No, they need to take that chance. That's the mindset that you gotta have. Remember, when there's asymmetric risk, there's a bigger chance in them not trying Primerica. And the reason I thought about this is because I was texting someone who was a recruit from a very long time ago, maybe like 10 years ago, and it's just like, she's just going through a lot financially and going through a lot family-wise and with sickness and all of these different things. And I thought about it, I was like, dude, I, I interviewed you, I showed you why you should try something and you didn't do it and your life is so hard. Her life is not hard because she didn't do Primerica. All I'm saying is 10% chance, maybe if she had done it, she'd be in a different situation. We can change the trajectory of people's lives by them trying this opportunity, but you have to convey that when you're, when you're sitting with people. And that's why they say the size of your team is the size of your belief. Because if you really believe that, you would have a big team because you would be talking to everybody. That's the mindset of a recruiter. Why wouldn't everybody try? Look at the room, look at how diverse it is. Look how many different types of people we have. The ages, the levels of education, the different professions. This opportunity is for everyone. And when you look at it that way, where the downside is very, very low, almost non-existent in my opinion, you would be recruiting a lot of people if you really believe that, right? So I wanna bring up, uh, on that topic, I wanna bring Josh up. He has um, a training on prospecting and being on a prospecting program and being consistent with prospecting. Is that what your topic is today? Okay, characteristics of a double digit recruiter, someone who gets 10 or more recruits, and you know, we don't just put anybody up in these situations. You know, year to date, he is the top recruiter, year to date, not one month. And so I want you to hear from the top recruiter, his mindset, how he's doing things, how he's training people. So give it up for Josh.